I now give the floor to the representative of the Syrian Arab Republic. Thank you, Mr. President. The American representative said that Russia spends resources to support what she called the Syrian regime. My question to her, what about the United States? The United States is spending its resources in Syria on what? To provide food and milk to Syrian children or to provide armed groups with weapons, armed groups that have committed the most heinous crimes against the Syrian people? Or is it spending resources on your planes and fighter jets that have been so active in Syria? My American colleague has been threatening my country in most Security Council sessions. Does she acknowledge then that her administration does not give this Security Council any weight? It does not respect the principles of international law or the United Nations as a whole? Let's test the credibility of what she presented. And note that I'm not referring to the American administration as the American regime, because it's shameful. We cannot do this in the United Nations. So let's test the credibility of what she's presented. She said this Security Council must act to achieve justice in Syria. Okay, then. My test is her administration should allow the disclosure of the results of the UNSCOM. They investigated the presence of WMDs in Iraq for 18 years. This uh, commission was headed by a Swede, Hans Blix, and as you know, this commission didn't find anything after 18 years of investigation or examination. They didn't find any chemical weapons, they didn't find Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola. Nevertheless, in 2008, towards the end of 2008, the Security Council, in a um, closed meeting, decided to end the work of this commission and bury the archives of this commission in iron boxes. And only the Secretary General knows how to open these boxes. He is the only one who has the locks. There was one condition. These boxes can only be opened after 60 years. What is so shameful in this archives? Why did we need to bury them in boxes that cannot be opened in 60 years? Mr. President, the government of the Syrian Arab Republic condemns in the strongest terms the ruthless Israeli aggression that took place this morning on T4 airport in Homs Governorate, killing and injuring a number of civilians. This aggression is a flagrant violation of Security Council Resolution 350 of 1974 and Security Council resolutions on counterterrorism. This aggression would not have occurred were it not for the unlimited and consistent support by the American administration to Israel. The American administration guarantees immunity so that Israel is not held accountable. This allows Israel to continue to practice state terrorism and threaten peace and security in the region and in the world. Of course, Western countries 
did not refer even to the Israeli aggression in their statements. That means that they are complicit and they support this aggression. Unfortunately, my dear friend Demostura did not listen to Netanyahu saying this morning that it is Israel that launched this aggression. This is why I was surprised when he said that the United Nations is not able to verify the identity of the perpetrators of this aggression. Well, Netanyahu himself, Mr. Mostura, is saying and that he launched this aggression. Why didn't you refer to Israel? Why didn't you explicitly say Israel is to blame for this aggression? This Israeli aggression is an indirect response to the successes of the Syrian Arab army. The army succeeded in expelling armed terrorist groups from the suburbs of Damascus, rural Damascus, and other Syrian territory. Those groups have been shelling the Syrian people, kidnapping civilians, detaining them, using them as human shields. Damascus alone was targeted by 3,000 missiles within three months, killing 155 and injuring 865 civilians, most of them women and children. The Syrian government stresses that the repeated Israeli aggressions did not and will not protect Israeli agents from terrorist groups. They also will not and did not divert the attention of the Syrian Arab army from the decisive military victory over terrorists. Mr. President. The American anti-racism activist Martin Luther King said, and I quote, a lie is like a snowball. The further you roll it, the bigger it becomes. End of quote. It seems that this wise saying holds true at any time and at any place. The governments of some countries are lying incessantly. Fortunately, though, they're not quite perfecting the details of their web of lies. Just as the famous character of Baron Münchenhausen in German literature. Mr. President, some permanent members have become professional liars, and this in itself is a weapon of mass destruction. Through lying, Israel was occupied. Through lying, Palestine was occupied. Through lying, they, uh, they fueled the war in the Korean Peninsula. Through lying, they invaded Vietnam. Through lying, they invaded Grenada. Through lying they occupied Iraq, through lying they destroyed Libya, through lying that they established takfiri terrorist groups such as Al-Qaeda, Taliban, ISIS, Al-Nusra Front, Jaish al-Islam, and the list goes on. And through lying, these countries are trying to defeat Syria and prepare the ground for an aggression. It is worthy to note that the statement, the negative statement of the U.S. representative is in contradiction with a statement made by General Matthews, Defense Secretary. He said in an interview with Newsweek two days ago with the journalist Ian Winky. This journalist used a title for this interview. I will read it out in English. Now, Mattis admits there was no evidence President Assad used poison gas on his own people. Uh, this is not the uh, Syrian defense minister, it's the American defense secretary. How coherent is this administration. Mr. President, on the 10th of December 2012, 
2012, so six years ago. We conveyed a formal letter to the Council with the symbol A-67-628. So before the first time, the operators of terrorist groups claimed that sarin gas was used in Khan al-Asal on March 19, 2013. We informed you that the United States, the United Kingdom, and France have launched a campaign of allegations claiming that the Syrian government might have used chemical weapons. Back then, we warned that such allegations would encourage governments that sponsor terrorists to provide chemical weapons to armed terrorist groups, and then claimed claim that the Syrian government had used those weapons. What happened in the past few years in Khan al-Asal, al Ghouta? Kofr Zeta, Latamina, Talmennis, and Khanshayrun, and other villages and towns in Syria, confirms unequivocally that we had what we had warned of five years ago.